Welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. We are going to look at some heating options uh, and problems here at the uh, the new Woodland Homestead. So there's lots of different uh, gas heating things here at this house, but they're old. Uh, a lot of the stuff is super old. In fact, the, the heater I'm going to show you in the garage, I, I'm not sure we're going to get that one to work, but it's uh, they're really neat. So I figured we'd take a look at these. Uh, we have a, an indoor fireplace here. It's a gas fireplace that does have a blower on it. So it is kind of a heat source as well as it looks nice. And then we have the, the shop heater. So we're going to look at both of these, see if we get these things up and running to a, a safe, uh, in, a, in a safe way <laughs> and, uh, and see if we can add a little extra heat to some places that uh, get pretty cold. So let's take a look at the first one here, this fireplace and uh, see what needs to be done. So we have this, uh, it's a pretty nice little gas, gas log uh, unit here and it's got a little blower underneath it so it does circulate some air uh, and I've never used it because well I tried to use it when we first moved in here I fought with it for like an hour trying to figure out what was going on and then I finally figured out that this wasn't really attached to the wall and I pulled it back and looked back here and it had been disconnected so the actual gas line comes in through the wall back there I don't know if you can see the the little cap um, it's capped off and it was disconnected from the gas. So when I, we had a, uh, we ran out of propane last year, the propane guy came out and had to like inspect all of our appliances before they could turn it back on or fill it back up again. And, and he said, oh yeah, I've been here before. Uh, we had to disconnect this fireplace because it, it doesn't meet code. Uh, code is for these kinds of units is that there has to be an external gas valve in the same room as the, the fireplace unit. And so normally what we do is we would install floor valves, uh, those little brass floor valves that go right in the floor. Um, and then that has like a little key with it. You stick in there and you can turn the fireplace gas on and off. That's code. Uh, this doesn't have that. So he had to disconnect it. So we're going to reconnect it. <laughs> um, I'm not putting a floor valve in because this is a concrete floor, but I can put a gas valve just right behind it. And so if there was ever an emergency, I could just pull this thing away and, and turn the gas valve off. So I'll put a gas valve right behind the unit there. Uh, and then we'll just hook it back up and uh, it should be safe and uh, we'll see if we can get some heat out of this thing. So it shouldn't be too difficult. I've got an old gas valve that I pulled off something, a half inch gas, gas valve. Uh, it should be a half inch pipe coming in and all we should need to do is just hook up one to the other. This is not the time to play. Get your toy. Give me the toy. Good girl. Ready? She just comes back. I need to throw it outside. For most of your half inch gas piping stuff, channel locks uh, are the way to go. Uh, I have a pipe wrench out here too, just in case I need a little more, more leverage on it. But these are, um, I can't remember the sizes on these, but I'll put a link in the description to this stuff. I bought these when I was in high school in 1997. And this one's missing a, uh, a, a grip here, <laughs> but these have been been great tools. They are they just last. The teeth are still good. Um, they're just solid, and and I haven't taken great care of them, but they are just great tools. So don't buy the cheap ones. Don't get the husky ones from Home Depot. Get some channel locks. So I can already see a, an issue here that, that, well, it could have been an issue. Remy, seriously, stop. <clears throat> stop it. Remy, stop. Stop. So I can already see where uh, this install, you know, could have been a problem. Uh, so anytime you have these type of flare fittings, the, the seal actually takes place right on the head of this. There's a, a on the other fitting, on those flexible uh, hoses, there's a, uh, a flared fitting that fits right along this edge. And when you put pipe dope, you're not really supposed to use, or at least I never do, use pipe dope or Teflon tape on these fittings because the, the seal doesn't happen on the thread like it does on a normal pipe fitting. It actually, the seal actually happens along this beveled edge. So if you get pipe dope in there, it actually can cause it to not seat uh, fully on there. 
So whenever I do gas piping anyway, I don't use uh, piped up here. So I'm actually gonna clean this off with some, uh, some soap and water and uh, see if we can get that cleaned off and the other side of the fitting. But I will put pipe dope on, on the regular pipe fitting that goes in the valve. So when I say pipe dope, I'm talking about this pipe thread sealant. Um, I've always just, we've always referred it to as pipe dope, I guess, in the trade. So uh, this is what I put on here. You can also use Teflon tape, that's fine for your normal pipe fittings. Um, it does actually help to lubricate the threads so that you can get it on there nice and tight. Um, technically, it's, I don't really consider it a sealant. Um, I wouldn't want this to be you know, the only thing keeping gas from entering my house. The, the seal actually takes place in the friction uh, in the threads once it gets in there tight enough, the metal to metal contact. This really just kind of lubricates the thread uh, so you can get it in there nice and tight. But whatever you want to call it, thread sealant, pipe dope, or Teflon tape will work as well. got one of these foaming uh, dish soap dispensers. So I'm gonna go turn the gas on uh, actually out in the shop that feeds this. So we'll turn the gas out of this and we'll test our first connection there and then we'll turn the valve on here and we'll test all the other connections, uh, including the flexible line, the fitting on the gas valve, and then down at the other end of the valve where it all connects. So I'm just gonna use a paintbrush and I'm just gonna, you know, suds up the, each connection and look for any bubbles. All right, so let's take a look in the shop and see our shop heater. So this is what we have. It is a, I'm guessing this was bought original with the house in 75 or 85, somewhere between there. It was a Sears model or sold at Sears. It's built right in, it actually, pulls in air, I don't know if you can see there's a grate, that's on the other side of the wall in the garage. Um, it pulls air in from there and up around this uh, heat exchanger that goes up through here. And then uh, th there's a fan at the top here that blows air out or pushes air the other way, I can't remember. So gas piping is all uh, coming in here. It has gas pressure to it. And I was able to fire it up as a test it actually has a little sight hole right here. So you can see the, the burner inside and there's a pilot right up in there. I was not able to get the pilot to stay lit. So I'm assuming that the thermocouple is maybe bad or dirty and, or maybe the gas valve is stuck. And so what I think I'm gonna do first is we'll try to clean the pilot and the thermocouple, see if we can sand it a little bit, see if we can get that to function. If we can get the pilot to light uh, and the burners to light, then that'll be, a good step. There was also a ton of noise with this uh, fan, so I think it's loose or something's bent with the cowl. And this is nice, it actually has a, a thermostat uh, right here <laughs> with some mosquitoes in it and it's cobwebs. But uh, this thermostat, you know, we can actually set, um, I don't know, right now it says it's, I don't know if that's right or not, it says it's almost 70 in here. I have a hard time believing that, but. So I could keep this set even at like, you know, 55 or 60, probably 55, and uh, just keep it from being super cold in here. I don't need it to be, to be perfect. I have lots of projects that I would love to work on. There's a, a bird house, uh, bird feeder here that I want to fix and a bunch of other drawers that are broken that I need to fix. And I actually want to set this shop up. So cleaning up things, uh, random bulbs in the corner, um, putting French cleats on the wall, all that kind of stuff. Like I really wanna you know, organize this shop and really get moved in here. But who wants to do that in the wintertime when it's you know, 10 degrees outside? So 
Uh, let's see if we can get this heater to work. I think it'll make a, a big difference for how much I use this shop and how much I get done out here uh, if we have some heat. So let's we'll see if this thing works. So basically what happens with, with these uh, generally, if you have a pilot and something that won't um, stay lit is there's a thermal couple in here. So the flame or like newer models that are called flame sensors. It's actually a sensor, but in old stuff like this, it's actually a, a thermal couple and it, uh, once the pilot flame is, is on it, it's like a piece of bimetal and it, it generates a little bit of voltage and it tells the, the gas valve that the flame is there. The pilot's lit. It's a safety thing. Um, if the pilot's not lit, then you don't want the main gas burner turning on and dumping a bunch of gas in the, in the thing and when there's no fire to, to start it. So you just fill up the room with gas and burn your house down. So that's what the, the point of the thermocouple is, but they get dirty. This is the, the thermocouple right here. and. Usually you can just get some sandpaper and clean it up. Some light sandpaper, 150 grit. You could use 220 or whatever, but. Okay, not getting any gas to come out of the pilot. So let's, let's take this off here. Let's see if something's clogged. All right, let's see if we can get some gas pressure out of here. Oh yeah, there's gas coming out of there. So maybe this was clogged. I'm not able to blow through this tube, so something else is clogged in here. I'm gonna try something crazy. Try something just crazy. I'm just gonna drill this, gonna drill the pilot out. So I've got my, I've got my right angle uh, attachment on the drill. Got my smallest drill bit, and it's not really gonna fit, is it? That went through. I think that was it. So this is the underneath of the pilot that I've been working on, and then see in here so there's the the top of the pilot and then there's the thermal couple right next to it okay so we know that will work. So now let's see if it. Okay, I'm pretty sure that this won't come on right now. So it looks to me like we're fans probably just off balance a little bit. And it's scraping right here. Okay. Well, so far, nothing's on fire that's not supposed to be. You can see the the burners. 
up there. Oh, here comes the fan. All right, let's try this again. Tighten it up a little bit. So I've got a bunch of these uh, work lights that always help in these little projects. I've got some battery powered ones that are great, but I never charge them. They're always dead. So um, these little LED panels are pretty cool. Uh, and this one I'll put a link in the description to. Hey, hey, that's much nicer. Oh yeah. That is sweet. Freezing cold, snowing. But it should be nice in here. It's old, it's ugly. Wood paneling, look at that, that was popular. <laughs> that was popular one day. But man, this thing kicks out some heat. Let's go around to the other side. I always thought this was a, an air intake to pull in fresh air. But so this junk pile here, but this thing is blowing out heat. Wow. So that'll actually heat the garage on this side. This is generally, uh, there, there's the shop right there. So the shop's on the other side of that wall. This is generally where we store all of our wood. We've used up quite a bit already this year. <laughs> but uh, so we'll have to clean this up. And we can use this, uh, this side of the garage too. It'll be nice and warm in the winter. So I do have a carbon monoxide detector that I will be putting out here. Uh, these, this is a ventless propane heater as many of the garage or wall mount uh, heaters are. Um, they burn so cleanly, or they burn so completely that there's very little um, emissions or, or whatever I guess carbon monoxide is produced. So, uh, but you do have to make sure that there's good ventilation in the room that you're in and, and all that kind of good stuff. So. Uh, I will have a carbon monoxide detector in here. I don't trust this to leave this thing on and have that pilot, you know, just out here running all the time and just set it to, you know, set it to 55 or something like that and just keep this kind of warm in here. So I will have this turned off <laughs> until I'm using it. So I'll turn the gas and everything off to it. And then if I want to come out here and use the shop that day, I'll come out, I can fire it up, let it run for a little while and, uh, you know, keep the shop nice and warm. So. It's actually surprisingly fairly quiet uh, in here. It runs, runs pretty quietly and it pumps a lot of heat in here. It's already getting hot in here. So, so these things are all part of kind of restoring the, the former glory to the homestead here. Uh, this house was built in 76. There's lots of old features, uh, old intercom systems and speaker systems and, and all these built-in things that were top of the line, you know, cutting edge stuff uh, back at, at the time this house was built that have kind of gone to the wayside here, have kind of been left, you know, to be run down. And so uh, these are all little things to just kind of clean this stuff up, fix these things up, get them working or get rid of them if they don't work anymore and replace them with something new. So uh, this thing still works. Uh, it's not great, it's not perfect, but it certainly will heat this shop for me. And so uh, we'll get it running. The, the fireplace there in the family room, uh, that thing works great. And we, uh, we use it from time to time. Whenever we go down to that room, it produces quite a bit of heat down there. So. Love to hear from you guys. Put your comments and thoughts, uh, tips and tricks, and all those kinds of things down below and share those not only with me, but everybody else that's watching. It's always fun to scroll through comments and uh, see what everybody has to say. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.